Good morning, everyone. So we're here to talk about a topic that I know is near and dear to every Minnesotan's heart, which is potholes. Uh, we have already experienced the eighth snowiest winter in history, and we're still moving up the ladder. There's a good chance we're going to crack into the top five by the time it's all said and done. We've already had 80 inches of snow this winter. And when you have that amount of snow and when you have the freeze-thaw cycles that we've seen, when you have the freezing rain, when you have the runoff that freezes and then melts again, it does wreak havoc on our roads and on our infrastructure. And that is why we've now entered pothole season officially. Uh, the good news is that we've got a plan. Uh, I have directed uh, Director Margaret Anderson Kelleher and her whole public works team to try to move as quickly as possible with as many crews as possible with additional overtime hours and weekend hours to make sure we are filling as many of the potholes as we can while we wait for a permanent fix. Now, here's also the reality of the situation is that I'm asking you to be a bit patient. Uh, because we can't go through the full street reconstruction or the mill and overlay or fill these potholes on a permanent basis until we know that the freeze-thaw cycle is finished. And that's not going to happen for another couple of weeks. So again, again, we can't move entirely down the permanent route until we know that the freeze-thaw cycle is complete. That would, in fact, be the opposite of what we were looking for in terms of the streets. Uh, so in, in the meantime, uh, what we're adding is this asphalt gravel mixture to all of these potholes. Now, is this the best long-term solution? No, it's not. But it will fill the holes during this interim period of time while we wait for that freeze-thaw cycle to get complete and before we have some of these firm permanent fixes in place. To give you an idea what it's like, if, if you think of smearing cream cheese on a really hot bagel, some of it sticks and some of it doesn't. Uh, it'll get us through these next several weeks here while we wait till the freeze-thaw cycle finishes and then we're on to the next patch. Uh, so what we're asking all of you to do here now is, is one, uh, if you see a public works crew out there and they're going to be out there in droves, again, we're going to authorize a pretty substantial allocation for overtime, uh, for weekend hours, and for additional crews to be out there doing this work. Make sure you thank them. Make sure you say thank you. Second, be patient. And third, call 311, uh, letting us know where these potholes are, how serious, how big they are, if you can get a picture and send it in. That all helps us better help you. And so that's the direction we're going right now. We really appreciate everyone as we move through this pothole season and then into construction season here in Minneapolis. Uh, but I'll tell you, we got a plan and we'll be on the right track. Uh, and with that, I, I want to hand it over to our, our leader of this whole effort and initiative and director, Margaret Anderson Kelleher. Well, thanks, Mayor. And thank you for coming today. Margaret Anderson Kelleher, Director of Public Works. Uh, as the mayor said, we are out there already filling potholes. We are going to continue to fill potholes. It, the temporary patch that the mayor mentioned, which is cold patch, the truck behind us carries both. It would carry both a cold patch, and when the plant is up and running for hot patch, it'll carry that as well. We're going to do about 250 tons of cold patch this year, and that has started. But as the mayor mentioned, the issue is cold patch is more porous. It still allows water through, and with the freeze-thaw cycle, often those filled potholes will pop up again. And so we just, we, it's kind of a repeated process until we can get the hot patch in our hands. Uh, the hot patch uh, comes to us from a plant in St. Paul, and that is not open yet. The permanent patching of potholes, we will be filling over 200 potholes a day. And so that process is the hot patch, it's compacting the hot patch and making sure that it stays down. 
but like the mayor said, we need your help, and we need uh, folks to report those potholes. We don't magically know where the potholes are. We need people to tell us how long the pothole is, how deep the pothole is, where the pothole is. We have an order of uh, operations in how we fill these potholes. If the pothole is more of a, a dangerous pothole that it could cause damage, that goes to the top of the list. And then we go from there to fill those potholes. We also uh, want to just tell you a little bit about what we do to mitigate this problem. We do work on our streets year round. And, uh, Director Powman, Joe Powman is going to tell you even more about that. But every year we are on a five-year average. We've done 20 miles of seal coating, 30 miles of crack sealing, 31 miles of street resurfacing and street reconstruction. The only way out of pothole season is really those things. The, the better repair the streets are in. And we have a very good plan in Minneapolis of our 20 year street repair plan, but it takes some time. And obviously we have winter for a good part of that. So uh, the mayor mentioned being able to put more resources on this. We are going to start doing that immediately. We are going to uh, increase uh, overtime hours for folks do weekend hours and that money will also pay for materials and we estimate based on the last time we had a very serious pothole season which was about 2013 2014 we spent an additional uh, million dollars and we believe that we'll spend at least that amount on this pothole season so I'm going to turn it over to director Joe Powman who directs transportation maintenance and repair he has a couple of his colleagues with him here today and we're gonna let Joe tell you a little more about the detail. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Margaret. As Director Anderson Kelleher said, my name is Joe Palm and I'm the Director of Transportation Maintenance and Repair. And what I'm going to talk a little bit about today is why potholes form, um, why this season has been uh, particularly problematic for potholes, and what our plan is, as well as um, our, how we're going to prioritize um, the repair of the potholes. Um, so as many of us uh, know, potholes form when water enters the cracks in the streets, freezes, expands, and then displaces the pavement. Um, we've all put something in our freezer that's carbonated, and, and we, we all know what happens. It's the, basically the same principle with potholes. Um, and so in a typical year, um, we see potholes. You know, we see a few starting to develop in January, um, and then we see the majority of them come in the spring. Um, what's atypical or, or different about this year um, is in spite of the fact that we're approaching record snowfall numbers, um, we have had temperature-wise a, um, a more mild winter. And so we saw uh, many back-to-back freeze-thaw cycles in January, and, and we saw um, you know, many, many more potholes in January than we normally see. You know, a typical year for us, we'd start patching, excuse me, patching potholes in February and March, and, and we began that you know, much earlier in January. Uh, this year. Um, so in terms of our operational plan and, and how we plan to address uh, the potholes, I, I think the mayor and director Anderson Kelleher did a good job of talking about that cold, uh, cold patch mixture that we're using right now. Um, the cold pat patch mixture is temporary in nature, um, but we're glad we have it because it, it does a good job of sticking to wet potholes. It does a good job of patching potholes in less than ideal conditions, which is what we see out there right now. Um, Moving forward to when the um, asphalt plants are open late this month or in early April, um, we will deploy at least 80 personnel um, with, with the extra funding and overtime. We, we may be able to add an additional three crews to that. Um, so we will, it will be a all hands on deck uh, approach again, just as it has been with snow removal this winter. Um, and, and we will begin to prioritize not only our 311 um, manholes that we're prioritizing right now, um, kind of the worst of the worst. We will still, we will still be prioritizing those, but we will also be forming routes um, so we can make sure you know that our crews are as effectively and efficiently patching the potholes as possible. Um, with that, we can stand for questions. So. 
I'll do that two different ways. Uh, the cold patch is actually included in our snow budget. So the cold patch just goes right into what we're using on snow, and we don't have a final total yet in terms of what we're going to spend this year. We're obviously spending more than we spent last year on snow removal uh, and snow mitigation. On potholes, typically we're spending between $1.3 and $1.5 million on street repairs, which are the type of street repair that uh, is more reactive. So a pothole is a reactive street repair. We're going out there, we're fixing it. So we'll probably add to that an additional million dollars this year. We don't have the exact tons of what we, we put in last year, but we, I can get you those numbers, but we do know that we're probably at 80% a greater number than what we were at this time last year. So as we said, you know, typically where we don't start patching much in January, we've, we've used a, a good, you know, we used a good part of our patching material starting in January this winter. So the, the St. Paul asphalt plant is usually one of the first plants that opens up in the spring. Um, there are other asphalt plants around the metro as well, but you know it, it seems like historically that plant opens first and is the one that a lot of the area cities go to to get their hot mix from. So I, I wouldn't say it's atypical that they're not open yet. It's, it's, uh, it's typically open right around the 1st of April just, just because of the weather that's needed to produce the hot, the hot mix. The hot, pitch, hot patch mixture is uh, fairly resilient and will stick for quite a while. I mean, it could, it could last for up to even a couple of years. It's not, uh, but the cold patch usually doesn't make it through the season and sometimes doesn't even make it through a couple of weeks. So that's why we have to go back and do the two-step process on that. Some more comments nationwide. Is there any discussion, studies, etc., happening at the city level as far as um, alternative types of pavement other than asphalt? Are there drainage studies? Anything that's um, less susceptible to the free fall? Yeah, and, and thank you for mentioning drainage. Something I should have asked, too, is that uh, we really do want people to clear drains that are backed up because having drainage back to the street, the melting snow, also contributes to forming the potholes. So it is okay on a residential street to go out there with your ice chopper or your shovel and clear out that drain. We want you to be doing that. Um, obviously, if it's a busy road, please don't do that. But if it's a residential street, we encourage folks to do that. You know, studying this at the city level, there's actually a number of things happening nationally on studying of materials. And uh, I do know from my experience at MnDOT, the MnDOT has a research program that they fund both with the University of Minnesota and other universities around the country looking at these very things because we all face the similar problem, whether it's state, county, city, uh, we are all having this issue. And so studying what other materials may be effective is something that's happening. Yeah, so two things. Um, the 20 year streets plan is really about reconstruction and resurfacing of our streets to keep them in good repair. And so traditionally that is either asphalt or concrete that is put onto the streets. Uh, I think the, the bigger issue you're asking about, there are some places, um, MnDOT's research road uh, facility up on 94, they are studying some additional materials that could maybe add to the resiliency of pavement. That's one thing that we're looking for, but there's nothing exactly there right now today that we could utilize. In terms of the street reconstruction, is what's happening right now alter, I assume there's a plan for what streets are gonna be reconstructed. Is what's happening right now, there are some streets that are literally undrivable 
the last couple of weeks. Does, does what's happening with the pothole season alter the, the plan of what streets are re reconstructed? So uh, the issue of how we prioritize these streets for their street reconstruction, uh, it's a combination of using the pavement uh, condition index, the PCI in the city. And so when a PCI is falling below 50, we're paying much, much closer attention to it. In some cases this winter, because of the ice and those things, those streets that are already due for either resurfacing or repaving are definitely on our radar. That, generally speaking, uh, that is set for this year of which streets will be reconstructed or repaved. Obviously with the conditions we're having going forward there's sometimes going to be some changes to that 20-year street plan. Usually it can be one or two streets where we see really terrible conditions that we have to address on an emergency basis. So I think the, the other point is that we talked about the hot mix versus the cold mix. Uh, the cold mix is, is used right now and necessarily so because it's my understanding that the hot mix would not work as well while the freeze-thaw cycle is still taking place. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We are going to go fill a pothole close by, so over on... Let's see, border right in front of the glass house. Is that correct? Yep, okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yep.